All right, everyone, here is number 113. It is called The Stonebreakers by Gustave Courbet. It is, was a very large painting. It's five feet by eight feet. And the reason why I say was is because it was destroyed during World War II. It was being transported out of the city of Dresden just as the Allies began firebombing the city. So this painting no longer exists, which is a shame because it is one of his most important pieces. Um, the quote at the bottom, I want you guys to read because, uh, or I guess I could read it to you, because it kind of encapsulates what he believed. And he said this at the end, towards the end of his life. So um, he said, to be able to translate the customs, ideas, and appearances of my time as I see them, in a word to create living art, this has been my aim. The art of painting can consist only in the representation of objects visible and tangible to the painter, who must apply his personal faculties to the ideas and things of this period in which he lives. I hold also that painting is an essential concrete art and can consist only of the representation of things both real and existing. An abstract object, invisible or non-existent, does not belong in the domain of painting. Show me an angel and I'll paint one. And that really just kind of sums up what his belief is, is that he wants to, it's almost like he is a photojournalist except a painter. He wants to show what the real world was like and not glorify it or make it pretty. He wanted to show this is how people lived. So uh, this one was made in 1849, just a year um, after, well, it was finished just shortly after the Communist Manifesto was published. Corbet had moved to Paris in 1839 and was involved in the Revolution of 1848 in Paris, and that's really going to radicalize him. He's going to be a socialist, and his pieces are going to be political. The pieces are social commentary at a time where that was considered new and not really acceptable. He's considered the father of the realism movement, and it had a defining impact on both realists and early Impressionist painters. The Stonebreakers, along with other pieces by Courbet, and the next one you're going to learn about, Olympia, are considered by many to be the defining works of realism. So for this painting in particular, we have um, him depicting two workers breaking and removing stone in order to produce the gravel that will be used to build roads. The figures, the men wear ripped and tattered clothing. If you notice, the boy is wearing modern work boots, whereas the old man wears kind of traditional wooden clogs. This may represent the fact that the boy will represent a grim future, whereas the man represents the rural past. Notice there's no mytho mythologized farm workers, uh, but instead a man who looks far too old to be doing this work and a boy who looks far too young for such hard labor. The, it presents the disenfranchised peasants who on the backs of, of them, modern life is being built. Corbet himself said it was rare to meet the most complete expression of poverty when he saw, I mean, this is something he actually saw when he saw these two people breaking stones. Corbet saw the men on a highway, but asked them back to his studio to sketch them. And it's clear that Corbet set out to make a political statement with this, but he did follow academic practice of work in the studio to make it happen. The setting is a, is a small hill of the sort that's common in the rural French town known as Ornan, where the artist had been raised and spent most of his time. The hill reaches the top everywhere except the upper right-hand corner, and in effect that isolates the laborers and suggests that they're physically trapped by their work. Like the stones themselves, the brushwork is rough compared to what was popular in the 19th century, he used this by using a palette knife to apply the pigment, 
and his serious subjects is a firm rejection of the elegant style of painting preferred by the Salon uh, class. This suggests that the way the artist painted was in part a conscious rejection of the new, of the highly polished and refined neoclassical style that still dominated French art at this time. Traditionally, an artist would spend most of the time attending to the foreground, the hands and faces, but Corbet gives equal attention and treatment to the rocks. Now, this painting is not meant to be heroic, but instead it's supposed to be an accurate account of French rural life. His choice of subjects are deeply rooted in the everyday and perhaps suggesting that in this, maybe the middle to lower classes are heroic. By rendering labor on the scale of the, and the size of a history painting, Courbet intended to provoke traditions by asserting that peasant laborers should be venerated as heroes. He signifies the brutality of modern life through his rough use of paint, the dull, dark colors, the awkward poses, and this kind of stilted composition. Courbet himself described the work as a symbol of injustice. During the neoclassical and romantic eras, the significance of a painting was judged by the virtue of its theme and by the painter's adherence to academic rules of composition and execution. But Courbet broke those rules and insisted the only goal of the artist was to re reproduce objects visible and tangible to the painter. When this was shown at the salon, it was attacked by critics who objected to the depiction of such a provincial um, subject on such a heroic scale and Courbet's disrespect for the rules of academic competition, I'm sorry, composition, and even for the lack of suggestion of an afterlife. His, one of the famous quotes that is in this piece is um, attributed to him is like he's not going to play the same academy games and so the way he said that was show me an angel and I'll paint one. To those who are well knowledge in art, the commonplace figures and subjects seem vulgar. Courbet had submitted this knowing it would be denounced, but he wanted to challenge the prescribed style, subjects, and finish of academic painting. And this is going to influence future painters um, that we're going to talk about. At the cancellation of the 1854 Salon and the rejection of some of his work in the International Exposition of 1855, Courbet withdraws the 11 works of his that had been accepted and began um, constructing a temporary building on rented land near the Fairs Pavilion of Art and installed a show of his own works that he called the Pavilion of Realism, boldly asserting his independence from the salon and many other artists followed in his footsteps, particularly um, the Impressionists. Courbet's redirection of the subject matter toward the commonplace had an important influence on younger French artists like Manet that we're going to talk about and then the future Impressionists in our next um, section. Okay, so that's the Stonebreakers by Gustave Courbet.